Dear people watching and listening, Assalamu alaikum. Kindly like and share this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please support my channel by contributing to my Patreon account so that I can continue making such videos for you. Start of Chapter 3 Al Quran, absolutely unique in its recording. Among all the extant religious literature of the world, the Holy Quran is absolutely unique. Its recording and preservation are miraculous because it stands out distinctly from the ordinary human pattern of narration. The short sighted and the inimical say that it is incoherent or incongruous. The pattern definitely is different. It is unique. It is miraculous. Let me substantiate what I assert. Human style. Every other religious book is set on the pattern of once upon a time, or the fox and the grapes, the wolf and lamb, etc., etc. That is, 1a. In the beginning, once upon a time, God created the heaven and the earth. Holy Bible, Genesis, chapter 1, verse 1. b. In the beginning, once upon a time, was the word and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Holy Bible, John chapter 1, verse 1. See, this is the genealogy, the origin, the beginning of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Holy Bible, Matthew chapter 1, verse 1. 2. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass. So it happened, once upon a time, that the Lord spake unto Joshua. Holy Bible, Joshua, chapter 1, verse 1. 3. Now after the death of Joshua it came to pass. So it happened, once upon a time, the children of Israel asked the Lord. Holy Bible, Judges, chapter 1, verse 1. 4. Now it came to pass. So it happened, once upon a time, in the days when the judges ruled, that there was famine in the land. Holy Bible, Ruth chapter 1, verse 1. 5. Now there was a certain man, once upon a time, of Ramath Thames of him, of the Mount Ephraim. Holy Bible, 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 1. 6. Now it came to pass, so it happened, once upon a time, after the death of Saul. Holy Bible, 2 Samuel chapter 1 verse 1 7 Now once upon a time King David was old, gone cold, and stricken in years, and they covered him with clothes, but he got no heat. Holy Bible 1 King chapter 1 verse 1 Now once upon a time, in the first year of Cyrus king of Persia. Holy Bible Book of Ezra chapter 1 verse 1 9. Now it came to pass, so it happened once upon a time, in the days of Ahasuerus. Holy Bible, Book of Esther, Chapter 1, Verse 1. 10. Now it came to pass, so it happened once upon a time, in the thirtieth year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month. Holy Bible, Ezekiel, Chapter 1, Verse 1. If these examples do not confuse and bewilder you, then nothing else will. You are inevitably struck with the once upon a time syndrome. You have cultivated a predilection for man-made stories, even if they be true. The style, the pattern, the narration is what I am speaking about. This is how humans think, talk and write. No blame on them for humans will be humans. All the above references are from the authorized King James Version, which is the most popular version among the Christians of the world. You must have noted that every verse in the above quotation is chapter 1, verse 1, meaning the first chapter and the first verse of every book of the Bible, which start with now, now, now. Try it out. See for yourself how many more such beginnings you can find in the book of books. I must, however, warn you that your Bible concordances will not help you. You will have to page through the Bible the same way as I did.
concordances won't help. I consulted two Bible concordances. The one was published by the Jehovah's Witnesses, the fastest growing Christian sect in Christendom. The second is Young's analytical concordance to the Bible. Both these concordances boast over 300,000 entries each. The latter has no less than 277 nows listed. But there is not a single now, once upon a time, of the examples given above. You can guess the reason. I do not want to tax your patience any further. I realize that you will want proof. All right now, please tell us your story about your Quranic revelation. It was the night of the 27th of the month of Ramadan that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet of Islam, was in a cave of Hira in the outskirts of the city of Mecca. He used to retire to Mount Hira for peace, quiet and contemplation. He used to worry about the problems of his people, their drunkenness, adulteries, idolatries, wars, their rank injustices and cruelties, so much so that Gibbon, the master historian, was constrained to record in his decline and fall of the Roman Empire. The human brute, the Arab, almost without sense, is poorly distinguished from the rest of the animal creation. The recluse of Hira was yearning for a solution. He was wont to retire to his retreat often alone, but sometimes with his dear wife Umm al-Mu'mineen, mother of the faithful Khadijatul Kubra. The first call. One night, the night of Laylatul Qadr, the night of power and excellence, when divine peace rests on creation and all nature is lifted up towards its Lord. In the middle of that night, the book of God was opened to the thirsting soul. Gabriel, the angel of God, appears to him and commands him in his mother tongue, Iqra, which mean read, or recite, or rehearse, or proclaim aloud. Muhammad wasallam was too terrified and was totally unprepared for this shock. This was no graduating or grounding ceremony. In fear and trepidation, he cries out, Ma ana biqari'in. I am not learned. The angel repeats the command, Iqra, for the second time, with the identical response from Muhammad. Gabriel embraces him hard and commands him the third time, Iqra bismi rabbikal ladhi khalaqa. Read, in the name of thy Lord and cherisher who created. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam now grasps that what he was required to do was repeat what was being said since this Arabic word ikra means all these things. Read, recite or repeat. Following the above first verse of Surah Al-Alaq, chapter 96 of the Holy Quran, four more verses were repeated and recited on Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam first call and subsequently recorded in written form in the Holy Quran. Hold it, Mr. Didat. I can almost hear you shriek. All this that you are telling us about your Quranic revelation is no different from the other numerous examples you have to prove to have had a human hand in it. Were they all fallible and not divine? Exactly. I am happy that you see clearly how the subjective mind of man thinks, talks and records. From the time you asked me, please tell us your story about your Quranic revelation. And I began to respond. It was the night of the 27th of the month of Ramadan, up to and subsequently recorded in written form in the Holy Quran, were my own words, bordered from the Holy Quran, from the book of tradition, from history and from the lips of learned men I heard over the decades. The Quranic scripture has no such stain from the hands of men. This is how it is preserved. I list below the first five verses of the first revelation to Muhammad wasallam for your critical observation and study. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. Iqra bismi rabbikal ladhi khalaq. Proclaim or read in the name of thy Lord and cherisher who created khalaq al insana min alaq. Created man out of a mere clot of congealed blood. Iqra wa akram. Proclaim, and thy Lord is most bountiful. 
الذي علم بالقلم he who taught the use of the pen علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم taught man that which he knew not Holy Quran Surah Alaq Chapter 96 Verses 1 to 5 A Unique Record Every Quranic text in Arabic or in a translated form in any language will follow this pattern. There is no ifs and buts. You will not find in the text or translation that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was 40 years old when he received his first call. You will not find that he was in the cave of Mount Hira. You will not find that he saw the angel Gabriel or that he was terrified or how he reacted and responded to the command Iqra. That when the angel departed after having completed the first five verses, Muhammad ran home some three miles south to Mecca to his dear wife Khatija and related what had happened and requested her to cover him up, cover him up. And this is what I call a once upon a time style. The Holy Quran narrates nothing of this. It is absolutely unique in its narration and its preservation. In short, it is miraculous. Further, unlike any human endeavor of literary art, where everything begins with the beginning, the first word and the first verse of the Quranic inspiration is not the first chapter and the first verse of the Holy Quran. It occupies the 96th chapter of the Holy Quran as the divine author God Almighty had instructed his chosen messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No religious book on earth is like it or follows this pattern because no alleged revelation was preserved in its pristine purity when it was revealed. A Canadian Psychologist I had the privilege of sharing my thoughts on the first call of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as contained in the first five verses of Surah Al-Alaq, chapter 96, with a young man from Canada. I was taking him on a guided tour of the largest mosque in the southern hemisphere. Whilst chatting, I inquired as to his occupation. He said that he was doing a postgraduate course majoring in psychology. Psychology, I said and immediately drew his attention to the first five verses of the chapter under discussion. I asked him as to how he would account for the message and experience of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, speaking about reading, writing and learning things unknown before, things which were not his immediate problem, nor the problem of his people. How could the subjective mind of a man, as if out of the blue, rehearse these words? I said, account for it. He said that he could not. He confessed that he had already grappled with that problem. I said, in that case we would have to accept the man at his word. And I quoted the first verses from Surah Najm. One Najmi is a hawa by the star when it goes down. Ma dhalla sahibukum wa ma ghawa. Your companion is neither astray nor being misled. وَمَا يَنْتِقُوا عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ Nor does he say aught of his own desire. إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُحَىٰ It is no less than inspiration sent down to him. عَلَّمَهُ شَدِيدُ الْقُوَىٰ He was taught by one mighty in power. Holy Quran, Surah Najm, Chapter 53, Verses 1 to 5 And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is repeatedly made to tell the people. قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَنَا بَشَرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ يُوحَىٰ إِلَيَّا Say, I am but a man like yourself, but the inspiration has come to me. أَنَّمَا إِلَاهُكُمْ إِلَاهٌ وَعَاحِدٌ That your God is one God. Holy Quran, Surah Kahf, Chapter 18, Verse 110 The young Canadian politely responded, I will have to give this matter serious thought. If only we would familiarize ourselves with the facts from the Holy Quran, we would be able to open a conversation with the specialists in any science. Miracle of Journalism Being a beehive of activity, the IPCI Center attracts a lot of people for dialogue and discussions, including the journalist and the newspaper man. 
As soon as I discover that my interviewer's field of activity is journalism, I tell him that I would like to show him the Holy Quran as a miracle of journalism. No one refuses to hear. I begin with the story of the Holy Prophet Moses salam, in the style and pattern of once upon a time. It can't be helped. Yet we cannot afford the luxury of the details of Moses and the bulrushes, or even the details of his childhood mother and his sister. Holy Quran, chapter 20, verses 38 to 40, and chapter 28, verses 7 to 13. We have to skip the details. I begin with his mishap in the city. Moses salam came upon two men fighting, a man belonging to his own tribe and the other an enemy of his people. He went to help the Jew against the Egyptian and in the altercation slapped the tyrant too hard so that he died. Moses salam then fled the country into the Sinai desert and found himself among the Midianites. Here he helped two damsels in distress and was offered a job by their father Jethro. After having completed his indenture for a period of over eight years, Moses salam was beginning to get bored with his rustic existence. For a man who had grown up with royalty in the midst of the hustle and bustle of the city, he was getting restless. He wanted a change and asked for permission to become independent from his in-laws. Jethro was a very reasonable and a practical man. He grants Moses alayhi salam leave. Moses pioneers a track. Moses alayhi salam left with his wife and children, together with his share of the sheep and the goats which he used to herd for his father-in-law. After some time, he found himself with his family in the Sinai. He had lost direction from the last habitation with whom he had rested. He had run out of stalks of the braised meat that he was carrying. There was still enough matzos, the dried unleavened bread of the Jews. The problem was the meat. He had to slaughter a sheep or a goat. That would be easy. The difficulty was to start a fire which was a laborious task. It could take as long as half a day of rubbing two dissimilar materials. Obviously, there were no matches or lighters in those days. He was procrastinating, putting things off for today or tomorrow and his meat problem would be solved, he thought. Where is the promised miracle, Mr. Dida? So far, I have given only the background to the story. The miracle is to condense all the above and more in just four terse verses, four short sentences in the most beautiful prose. But to appreciate the feat, I must draw your attention to what I would like you to notice in what is to me the acme of journalism. Newspaper Placards I live some 30 kilometers north of the city of Durban, where I have my offices. Prior to the construction of the N2 freeway linking the city of Durban, I usually took the beach road to Durban. This route took me past the amphitheater on the Durban beachfront. At the intersection of the amphitheater, I regularly observed a news vendor offering the, mon the Natal Mercury for sale. He had a placard daily with headline to attract buyers. Again and again on reading the placard, I made up my mind not to buy the newspaper that day. But on parking my car in central Durban on passing other news vendors, I nevertheless bought the paper. After numerous such changes of decision, I began to question myself as to the reasons for my change of mind. I discovered that though the same newspaper was being offered for sale, the placards were different. On the beachfront, the placards were made appealing to European clientele whereas the placards in the area I passed were directed to the Asian community. By extension, the placard for the African and the colored areas would be slanted to induce them to buy the same paper. So the master journalist would be the one who could invent a single placard that would appeal to the four major race groups each day. That would be the masterpiece of journalism. Journalists, no doubt, all agree with this reasoning. Let us then analyze the Holy Quran on this basis. Universal Appeal Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam The Prophet of Islam is in Medina and is surrounded by Jews, Christians, Muslims, Mushriks and Munafiks in the city. The Holy Prophet is to broadcast his news 
divine revelation to all these various people? What must he write on his placard to attract the attention of each of these varied groups he is made to proclaim? Has the story of Moses reached you? Holy Quran, Surah Taha, chapter 20, verse 9. Can you imagine the excitement? The Christians and the Jews would be waiting to hear further, wanting Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to make a fool of himself. For they reason within themselves what could this Arab know about Moses alayhi salam since he is an ummi, unlettered. The Muslims are thirsty for knowledge. They would be yearning. Please tell us everything you can about Moses alayhi salam. The mushriks, the polytheists, and the munafiks, the hypocrites, were lolling their tongues to enjoy the three-sided debate on Moses alayhi salam. Between the Muslims, the Christians, and the Jews, Everybody is all ears, acutely attentive. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam continues. Isra naran, behold, he saw a fire. Dramatization. You can almost visualize the scene. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is talking telegraphically. It took about 2,000 years after the birth of Jesus Christ for the largest Christian and Jewish nations on earth the mighty United States, to reach the height of perfection in the advertising field to formulate the slogan, in the words of the Western Union Telegraph Company, don't write, telegraph. Which school of journalism did Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam attend to master this super-American citizenship? He is made to carry on. فَقَالَ لِأَهْلِهِمْ kusu. So he said to his family, إِنِّي أَنَسْتُ نَارًا Chari ye, I perceive a fire. Lali ati kum minha bikabasin. Perhaps I can bring you some burning brand therefrom. How adidu alan nari huda. Or find some guidance at the fire. Holy Quran, Surah Taha, chapter 20, verse 10. Dictating shorthand. Please compare the above with any other English translation of the Holy Quran by friend or foe and you will find the same brevity and economy of words. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not doing any exercise in pressy writing. He was only articulating God's words as they were whispered into his heart and mind through the medium of the Archangel Gabriel. We must remember that there was no Arabic Bible in the 6th century of the Christian era when the Holy Prophet dictated the Qur'an. Now do yourself a favor. Please contrast this Quranic revelation with the biblical story as contained in the second book of the Holy Bible, the book of Exodus, chapters 1, 2, and 3, which discusses this very aspect of the life of the Holy Prophet Moses alayhi salam we are dealing with here. I quote the beginning of the story from the Bible. Now these are the names of the children of Israel, which came into Egypt, Every man and his household came with Jacob. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah, Isachar, Zebulun, and Benjamin, Dan, and Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. And all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were seventy souls, for Joseph was in Egypt already. Holy Bible, Exodus, chapter 1, verses 1 to 5. Moses set up. Simply warming up. Is this how God speaks? Please compare these five verses from the Bible with the four verses from the Holy Quran reproduced below. To continue with the Quranic narrative, Moses alayhi salam was hungry for two things whilst wandering in the Sinai with his flock and family. He wanted fire to cook his meat and direction to some hospitable community in the desert. Allah was unfolding his plan. Moses alayhi salam was being set up for his mission from the illusion of burning coal to the reality of the spiritual fire burning in the souls of mankind for thousands of years and a true direction for the guidance of humanity. The fire that Moses alayhi salam saw was no ordinary fire. To him it meant an easy kindling of his own fire. The fire also indicated the presence of other human beings from whom he could get information and guidance. 
But when he came to the fire, a voice was heard, O Moses, inni ana rabbuka, verily I am thy Lord. Therefore, in my presence, put off thy shoes. Thou art in the sacred valley of Tuwa. Holy Quran, Surah Taha, Chapter 20, Verses 11 and 12. The spiritual history of Moses السلام, begins here, and this was his spiritual birth. In biblical terminology, this day have I begotten thee. This is how God spoke to David السلام, about his appointment in the book of Psalms, chapter 2, verse 7. The Holy Quran passage above is full of the highest mystic meaning, which is reflected in the short rhymed verses in the original. Both the rhythm and the meaning in the text suggest the highest mystery. For easier comparison, I reproduce the four verses together. As the story of Moses reached you, Behold, he saw a fire, so he said to his family, Chari ye, I perceive a fire, perhaps I can bring you some burning brand therefrom, or find some guidance at the fire. But when he came to the fire, a voice was heard, O Moses, verily I am thy Lord, therefore in my presence put off thy shoes, for thou art in the sacred valley of Tuwa. Holy Quran, Surah Taha, Chapter 20, Verses 9-12 to 12. Tuwa was the valley just below Mount Sinai, where subsequently Moses a.s. was to receive the law. In the parallel mystic meaning, we are selected by trials in this humble life, whose valley is just as sacred and receive God's glory, just as much as the heights of Mount Tur, Sinai, if we but have the insight to perceive it and the shoes were to be put off as a mark of respect. In the parallel mystic meaning again, Moses a.s. was now to put away his mere worldly interests and anything of more worldly utility, he having been chosen by the Most High God. What is your verdict? How is one, in your to folklore and fairy tales to evaluate this pure elixir from heaven? Even a sympathetic critic like Thomas Carlyle, one of the greatest thinkers of the past century, could not fathom its incisive brevity and prespiciousness. He called the Quranic reading a wearisome, confused jumble, crude, incondite, insupportable stupidity. Incondite meaning a badly constructed literary or artistic composition, and insupportable stupidity. After contrasting the Qur'an and the Bible narrations, how would your verdict go? I have yet to come across a journalist who failed to recognize the brilliance of Muhammad wasallam in dictating direct facts without any attempt on his part at analyzing or interpreting it exactly as a master journalist would do for today's newspaper or magazine. It is nothing short of the miraculous. Do you agree? End of chapter 3